We want to welcome all of you here as we are celebrating really Jesus Christ. We know that our nation is in a crisis. I know that I am the pastor of the church, and as a pastor, you're a shepherd. The Bible says the shepherd watches for the sheep, and it's with great concern that we uh, don't want any of you coming to church and possibly being infected with this virus. But I do want to say to you that God is in control. And we pray that this will bring you peace of mind in your heart and spirit as we have this broadcast for you today. God bless you as we worship the Lord. We're going to have the worship team come and bring us into the presence of the Lord. So worship with us, would you? God bless you.
different circumstances in your life, and I come to give you my peace, uh, saith the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this worship. We thank you that you can speak to us from your throne room. I pray your blessings now upon this message that you've placed in my heart. And let this message touch the people of God and give them your peace. For I ask this in your precious, lovely name. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen and amen. As I was waiting upon the Lord, wondering what to share, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I am the God. I am the God of the plague. Now, I want to say to you, it's a very unusual term to know that God is the God of the plague. But you see, you've got to turn in your Bibles with me right now to Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. I want you to listen to this scripture that God gave me. It says, pestilence marches before him and plagues follow close behind. He stops and he stands still for a moment and he gazes upon the earth and then he shakes the nations and he scatters the everlasting mountains and he levels the hills. His power is just the same as always. Another translation says this, contagious diseases go ahead of him and plagues follow after him. So according to Habakkuk, God is in the middle of plagues and pestilence. He's in the middle of all diseases that are rampant on the earth. And we need to know that sickness and disease can come upon God's people just as well as it comes upon those that do not know God. But I want to say to you right now, God is in control. And when you understand who is in control, it gives you a peace that passeth all understanding. A lot of people don't believe God's in control, but I want to say to you, God created heaven and earth, and God created me, and he created you. And if we understand that God created us, and everything started with God and ends with God, we have a peace. But I do want to say that there are sicknesses that can touch the righteous, as well as the unrighteous. In Exodus, we see that uh, uh, Moses, when he was bringing one to three million out of Egyptian bondage, there was 10 plagues executed upon the nation. And uh, three of those plagues, frogs, lice, and blood, uh, struck Israel as well as the Egyptians. But the Bible tells us when the fourth plague hit, which was flies, it did not touch Israel. Now, a lot of us will say, well, why? Why the flies? Uh, because uh, one of the names of Satan is the Lord of the flies. Uh, and I want to say to you, church, the devil can't touch you unless God allows it. Uh, and that's why we have peace and confidence, knowing that God is in control. Maybe God wanted to teach the Israelites how much they needed him and to rely upon him. And therefore, Israel did experience three plagues three plagues, but the rest they were spared from because of God. I want you to know we can lean upon God. He is a God that will sustain us and undergird and strengthen every one of us. The coronavirus has people crazy today, and they're absolutely fear-ridden. Sickness and death is all that we hear on the news. And I want to say to you, restaurants are closed, sports arenas are canceled, the stock market's falling. It's all gloom and it's all doom. And it doesn't hold a candle to the murders of unborn children. 125,000 abortions a day take place in the world. What about the other sins that the world is consumed with? And even our own nation that was founded under God. I want to say to you, this virus might be a wake-up call from God. We need to repent as a nation. We need to repent as individuals, and we need to get back to God. I want to tell you that this nation needs a revival and a visitation from God. Almost 
every revival in history was birthed because of great opposition. And I want to say to you, we're ready for a revival. We want a visitation of God. And I know that the first of the year, when we sought God for direction for the church, God spoke to us as a church that he's a God of the breakthrough. God is going to break through. God's going to bring a revival and a visitation that churches all over the world have cried out for. Church people need to know God. They need to know that he saves the souls of men. There are people out there that are lost and don't know God. And through this, they're going to find the God of heaven and earth. But not only do people need to be saved, they need to be healed. Sickness and disease can come upon the earth. But I want to say to you, I know who can cure every disease, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to tell people that God delivers. There are so many people tormented with fear today because of this virus. And the Bible says that God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. God often uses plagues to deal with people and their sins. It's something that you can see over and over again in the Bible. We're not afraid of a plague because I want you to know, I know the God of the plague. Amen. And uh, you know, the Bible tells us uh, in the Old Testament of a man called Korah, and he was from the Levitic uh, cult priesthood, Korah was, and he and 250 le uh, leaders uh, in the nation of Israel, they were key leaders, and they and Korah came to Moses, and they said, Moses, you take too much on you. We're just as holy as you are. Who made you the ruler over us? Who put you in leadership? And they rebelled against the leadership of Moses and Aaron. And the Bible says that Moses and Aaron fell upon their faces and they began to cry out. And I want to say to you that when those 250 leaders came against Moses, Moses said, listen, we're going to find out who's God's choice for leadership. We're going to find out uh, uh, who God has chosen to lead the nation of Israel. And so Moses told the 250 people to get incense and put them in, uh, in the uh, 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 incense holder that was in the holy place. Uh, the Bible says that before you go into the holiest of all, there was the altar of incense, and there was a censer, and they would put the incense in, and the incense would come out, and it would fill the holy place with smoke, and the only one that could take a censer and fill it was uh, Aaron, the high priest. And so Moses said, all right, you want to be the leader over this nation? Go get censers. So those 250 key leaders went and got censers, they filled it with incense, and they began to wave it. And when they did, the glory cloud of the Lord came upon the tabernacle, and the Bible says that fire came from the altar of God and burned all of them up. Every one of them were burnt. And the censers that they used to burn incense up, the Bible says that God told Moses to tell Aaron to get the incense and the censers that those men used because they were holy. And so Aaron went and picked up the incense holders and he made plates and he put it all around the altar so that when people came to bring their sacrifices, they would see the censer plates and they would remember it's God who brings leadership. It's God who is anointed different men and women of God to speak in behalf of them. Turn with me in your Bibles now to Numbers, chapter 16, verses 41 to 50. It says, on the next day, all the congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, said, and they said unto Moses, you've killed all the people of Israel. And it happened, when the congregation had gathered against Moses and Aaron, that they turned towards the tabernacle of the meeting 
and suddenly a cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron, it says, came before the tabernacle of meeting, and the Lord spoke to Moses. And he said, Moses, I want you to get out of the way. I am going to kill this congregation. I am going to consume them in a moment. And then the Bible says that Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. You see, when you fall on your face before God, you're praying and you're broken and you're contrite. You're interceding. And then it says in verse 46, look at verse 46 in the Bible with me. So Moses said to Aaron, I want you to take a censer. I want you to put fire in that censer. And I want you to take the fire from off of the altar and put incense in it. And I want you to run quickly into the congregation. And I want you to bring atonement for them. For the wrath of God has come upon God's people and a plague has begun. I'm talking that God uses plagues to bring us back to where we need to be focused on God. And in the sins that Israel did, many times God brought plague. And notice now in verse 47, then Aaron uh, took it as Moses commanded him. He ran into the midst of the assembly and he made atonement. He ran, Aaron ran into the midst of Israel and he was swinging uh, the incense uh, and he was uh, standing between the living and the dead. On the left were all those that died. On the right were all those that lived. And he stood in the middle of it, just like in Habakkuk. God stands in the middle of pestilence uh, and plagues. Uh, and I want to say, church, uh, that God has given us an example in Scripture. How that indeed he is the God of the plague. Uh, and he can use it to get our attention back upon him. Look at verse 49 now. It says, now those who died in the plague were 14,700 people besides those that died with Korah. You see, when Korah rose up against Moses, Moses said, if Korah dies a normal death, then I'm not God's anointed. But if I'm God's anointed, let something unusual happen. And the Bible says the earth opened up and swallowed Korah and his house and those leaders, 250, were burned and consumed by fire. So Aaron now returns to Moses after he waved the incense between life and death. And then it says in the Bible that he came to Moses that was at the door of the tabernacle, a meeting. And it says this. What does it say in your Bible, church? It says in verse 50, the plague was stopped. Did you hear me? It was stopped. God used the plague to defend Moses and Aaron that were called to be leaders of God's people. And God used the plague to bring Israel to their knees in repentance. And I want to say 14,700 people died immediately as a result of the rebellion against God's leadership. Aaron took incense and he took fire from the altar. And I want to say to you the answer today for plagues and pestilence and disease and the comfort that we have is that God's in the middle of it all. Did you hear me? God's in the middle of it all. And not only that, but I want to say to you, we need to get coals from the fire. We need fire. We need passion in us as Christians. We need to stand up and be a voice in this generation that God's in control and that God's going to do what God wants to do. And we're to glorify, honor, and praise him. But the fire of passion needs to be in our lives. The altar of incense speaks of prayer and intercession and praise, and we need fire in our prayer. If there's ever a time for us, as we're locked up in our homes, to have prayer time with God, to read the Bible, and to worship and praise Him, because when we pray and intercede and worship God, His presence comes down, just like it did when we opened this recording. The presence of God filled the church right here and right now. And we felt his mighty power. And we 
felt his mighty presence. You see, when he offered the incense before God and stood between the living and the dead, the Bible says he made atonement. You see, we need atonement. And Jesus is the only one that can bring atonement. Atonement means a covering. It means a payment. And I want to say to you, we were lost in sin. And God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, into this world. You see, our Aaron is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus has come to bring atonement to you and to me. And God stands with his son. And his son was sent into this world to redeem us. And just as Aaron stood between life and death, Jesus Christ stands between the living and the dead. God started the plague, and God's going to end the plague. The fire and the incense shows us how powerful God is to send his son, Jesus. Jesus is the answer to everything. And I want you to know Jesus is here right now in this place. I sense his mighty presence, and I know as you're watching this broadcast, that God's going to touch you and you're going to feel his presence as much as we do in this place. We don't need to be afraid of any plague or sickness or any virus. But I want to say to you, our sins are forgiven because of Jesus Christ. I don't fear anything because Jesus lives in me. My sins are forgiven and more than that, heaven is my home. You see, you need to be confident. That in the midst of any sickness, disease, or virus, God is still with us. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 41.10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. Listen to those words. He's saying, don't be afraid. I know a lot of you are afraid. I've got phone calls. Uh, on the phone all the time, Pastor, what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. God's in control. And through this, souls are going to get saved. Lives are going to be healed. And the tormented are going to be set free. God says, don't fear. I'm with you. Do not be afraid. I'm your God. Is he your God? When God promises I'm with you, he doesn't only promise to be with us in the good times but also in the bad times. He's God of the good and God of the bad. The Bible says he reigns on the just and he reigns on the unjust. His promise is that he will be with us always. He doesn't just come and then go, but he's always with us. And the Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. And I want to say to you, church, God's with you. Don't fear death. Don't fear the gloom and the doom that's projected. But you have a faith and a strength in the Lord God. The word of God gives us strength and it gives us a comfort. And the word of God needs to be your dwelling place. So in this time, when you can't get out of your house, I want to say to you, get into this book. This book is eternal. This book will give you comfort. It'll give you strength. And then when you go out, pick up your newspaper, and you say hi to your neighbor, and he's all fear-ridden, you can share Christ with him. You can tell him that you have a comfort and that you have strength in the midst of this situation. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalms 91, verses 1 to 3. And it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, and he is my fortress. He is my God, and in him will I trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And then it says this, and from the perilous pestilence. Did you hear that, church? God will deliver you, and don't be afraid. I want to say this in closing. And uh, this is a, a, a really a true thing that I'm going to share with you. I don't know if you know much about Martin Luther, but when we study church history and we study about Martin Luther, 
And uh, indeed, the truths that he brought to Christianity was powerful. But Martin Luther, when he was a young pastor, uh, there was a bubonic plague that hit Germany in 1527. And many began to flee for their lives. The plague, the plague of uh, bubonic plague is a plague of large boils that come on your body. And the large boils are on the neck and on the legs and on the armpits. That's what the bubonic plague was. Now these boils uh, could penetrate the body and it could go to the lymph nodes and that infection would enter into the bloodstream and death was certain. You would die within three to four days. 18 people died with this disease in Wittenberg, Germany. Just how many? 18. Martin Luther felt obligated as a minister of the gospel. He was full of faith. He trusted God. He knew that God gave him a call to preach Christ. He knew what God had done for him. And he knew that it was an opportunity for people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He knew that people could know a healing that only God could give and that they could be delivered from this terrible plague. Now he risked his life and he stayed behind. In spite of the commandment to leave, the authorities came through the town of Wittenberg and said, all of you get out of here. There's a plague and we have these people dying and you've got to leave. But Martin Luther said, I'm not leaving. I've got a call and a mandate from God. And he and his wife, Katie, trusted the Lord to take care of them. His little son couldn't eat for three days. They took two sick ladies on the streets and brought them into their home and prayed for them and believed God to touch them. And I want to say to you, all survived. Not one of them died. His wife delivered a healthy baby daughter and named her Elizabeth. But he put his trust in God. And not only did Martin Luther put his trust in God, he put his trust in the living word of God. And I want to say this, church, to you right now. Psalms 91. Martin Luther read every day that that sickness and plague hit his city and he didn't stop reading it till the plague stopped. So church, I'm telling you now, a mandate from me to you. If I'm your pastor and your shepherd, I want you to turn into your Bibles right now to Psalms 91. I want to read to you this psalm and I want you to read it until this virus is destroyed. Look at Psalms 91.1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to say to you, there's a secret place to hide. And that secret place you experienced as the worship team began to worship God, that is the secret place hiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And then verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he's my fortress, he's my God. In him will I trust. Church, God is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your God. And you can trust him. Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and the noise of pestilence. Did you hear that? He will deliver you from the noise of pestilence. That's all we're hearing now is noise of pestilence. And notice in verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by thee, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. This is a dark, evil thing. And it says, nor for the destruction and the waste of the noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right side. But it shall not come nigh thee. Take strength. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which 
which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. You make God your habitation. You get your mind on God. Verse 10, and there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways, and they shall bear thee up with their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now let's look at verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, and thou shalt trample him under your feet. I want to say to you, Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. You have power over all the powers of the enemy, and God wants you to take your stand, and he wants you to put your feet on the head of the enemy. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon you. God loves you. He loves me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He's going to set you on high because you know his name. Come on, he's given us a name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer. Church, call on him. He's going to answer. He's going to touch your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And you don't have to fear. Look at the rest of that. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you. He who honors me. Let's honor God. He's in control. God's in control, church. Now it says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God wants to give you long life. He doesn't want you to walk around fear-ridden. But God is going to use this play. He's going to use this uh, thing uh, that's out there, this virus. Uh, and I believe it's time for America to fall on their knees in repentance uh, and begin to, with fire in their bones, cry out, God, bring revival. God, touch our nation and change what the enemy sought to destroy. God, you said you would heal, restore, and make new. God bless you. I'm sorry that we're not having church in this building. Uh, in the history of our church, we've never closed the church. But in honor to the President of the United States and our leaders, I care about you. I care about your health. And I'm not going to uh, have church until uh, we uh, feel peace in our hearts. And, and when that happens, we're going to let you know. Can we bow our heads right now in closing? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you stand in the middle of it all. God, pestilence on one side, plagues on the other. But you're right in the middle. You're in control. And Lord, what a comfort it is to know that through all of this, you will be glorified. You will be honored. People will come to the saving knowledge of you, Lord. They'll be healed. They'll be delivered. God, oftentimes you use plagues to get man's attention. And Lord, may America given it to their attention upon you because Lord Jesus you are the answer to everything in life. We thank you for your word that gives us comfort and that gives us strength. We stand on the power of your word and now Lord bless every home, every family let them walk under the blessing of your presence and your peace for I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. If you'd like to send your tithe or an offering to support this ministry, please follow the instructions on the screen. <laughs>